Hi, this is Deb Dunn. I'm the Outreach Director at the Center for Autism Research at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And I am creating another video from the International Meeting for Autism Research being held currently in Toronto. I wanted to talk about one of the sessions that I went to this morning um, entitled Stability and Predictors of the Developmental Course of ASD from Childhood to Adolescence. Um, it's a study that comes out of the Netherlands and for me it was particularly interesting um, because it made me remember back to the very first IMFAR that I attended back in 2009 in Chicago. At that meeting, the big story of the day uh, was about optimal outcome. An optimal outcome referred to individuals who were accurately diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder in childhood, but after intervention and after um, growing up, no longer met diagnostic criteria. Um, so this particular study looked at individuals who were diagnosed uh, with autism spectrum disorder in childhood um, and then looked at them again in adolescence to look at how many of those individuals held on to the diagnosis and how many, if any, uh, no longer qualified uh, under dsm 4 for an autism spectrum disorder. Uh, what the study found was that 26 percent of the individuals with high-functioning autism, um, defined as IQs greater than 70, and indeed the mean IQ of their sample was 95, 26% um, of individuals with high-functioning autism no longer met diagnostic criteria using dsm 4 um, I was, uh, when I heard this, quite shocked, to be honest. I think we normally hear of autism spectrum disorders as lifelong uh, conditions uh, that you don't outgrow, and that uh, while individuals certainly improve, that the, the core deficits of autism always remain difficult for individuals, though they learn how to compensate and they find a niche in society oftentimes and can be quite successful. Um, whether or not an individual can move off spectrum has been still, even since 2009, up for debate. Um, so using this diagnostic, the same diagnostic criteria, dsm 4 they found that 26% no longer met criteria uh, of the high-functioning autism kids who uh, were diagnosed as children. Um, what distinguished the kids that they found who moved off spectrum uh, was that these children, uh, as children, these adolescents when they were children, uh, had less pragmatic language issues, um, and they also had more social contact and had less orientation, social orientation problems um, as children. And also, as the IQ increased, so did the likelihood um, that these individuals would move off spectrum. Um, what was interesting about this study, however, is that even though so many individuals moved off of the autism spectrum, 34% of the 26 who moved off um, did move to another psychiatric diagnosis. Um, so they're not out of the woods, if you will. Um, you know, it's not that they have magically lost any comorbid conditions or other symptomatology that might be associated um, or frequently seen with ASD. Um, as a parent, I worry about studies like this that talk about uh, individuals moving off of the autism spectrum because I wonder what it does for us as parents and also for society in terms of thinking about longer-term consequences. Uh, the kids that moved off spectrum, they were looked again at uh, between the ages of 12 and 19 and found not to meet diagnostic criteria. Um, when we're looking at ages 12 to 19, um, the, all of the children in the sample were still uh, in a school setting. Um, they had not yet presumably transitioned to work or to higher education, which itself might bring on uh, different challenges that uh, might make certain autism symptoms reappear, if you will. Um, I don't think that you know, necessarily they have disappeared, but they may have laid dormant uh, for a time and not shown themselves because of good intervention, because of uh, structured environments that have been set up. Even if the individual no longer receives specific supports, um, there has been likely over time a safe environment uh, established, friendships that have um, taken quite a while to facilitate that have developed and blossomed. And I wonder what happens to these individuals once that uh, sense of um, 
of a, an environment that they're comfortable with uh, changes uh, and they transition to another stage. Um, so while I find it heartening um, that many individuals uh, do no longer have so many uh, challenges in their life, I, I worry that um, parents may get uh, may feel like oh I can let my guard down I don't have to worry about employment issues housing issues friendship issues when those things may reappear later um, and then society as well may think well we don't have to worry as much about um, employment and other issues um, so as a parent uh, it's a study that I find very interesting um, but one that I think needs a lot a lot more research into what happens to these individuals. So the, the other psychiatric diagnoses, we didn't learn today what those are. Presumably they are ADHD and anxiety issues. Um, but what that means for individuals uh, who lose their diagnosis. Um, anyway, I think uh, I'll certainly report back if there are more studies that discuss this topic as it's one that's uh, interesting to me uh, as a parent and as a professional and uh, stay tuned for more updates later today.